This was really great. From the very first evening, we started discussing things that we would be witnessing at some of the ruins that we were going to view, um, many of them being uh, religious in symbolism. And the very first that we discussed um, was the ichthys symbol, one that you might recognize more commonly as this. So this was a symbol used by believers in Christianity at the time when Christians were still highly persecuted in order to identify one another. The first individual would draw a line, or rather a curve, in the sand um, facing away from himself or herself, and the person facing them, if they were a Christian, would draw a curve in the sign that would connect um, the other curve and make the fish symbol to indicate that they were speaking to another Christian. So the symbol was appropriately named the fish, or ichthys in Greek. The iota, or the letter that looks like an I, stands for Isus, which is the name Jesus. The he, or what looks like an X, is Christos, meaning Christ. The theta, or what looks like an O with a line in it, is for Theos, which is translated into the name God. The ypsilon, or what looks like a Y, um, is translated to ios, which is still a word used today for sun, and the sigma, or what looks like an S at the end, stands for soter, meaning savior. This was a really cool moment in our lessons because I've been studying Greek for two years, and this broke down a symbol that I was already familiar with in a way that I could understand more fully. The next day, we made our very first stop at the Colossi Castle of Medieval and Crusader Stronghold. The original castle was, was a big place because this was the, uh, the commanderia, the headquarters of the, the Knights uh, Hospital. As I say, he was the King of Cyprus, he was the boss of the order. Um, and he was uh, king of um, Jerusalem, and he was the king of Armenia, so he had a little domain with him. So whether he lived here all the time or his minions, but this place was uh, it lived in by an eccentric Englishman up till about uh, 1970, 1975. This little guy lived in here, no water, no electricity, <laughs> but he lived here. The original castle was built around 1210 by the Frankish Knights of the Hospitallers. The Gothic castle spans a large area and wasn't until 1454 truly completed. And that's the part we visited. The, uh, underneath the, the storage area in the, uh, in the, in the key, it's called the key, these big square holes are where the wooden floorboards, the, the poles go through, and see some more next door. Personally, I think what we ought to be doing, or they should be doing, is contacting the sea jam and getting the old telephone bolts. Mm -hmm. They're strong enough and, that, and, that, and, and put them in and then reconstruct part of, of the floor of each of the rooms. The castle still features a beautiful fresco preserved despite a number of raids on the castle. It's really amazing to visit a piece of military architecture that was finalized, only finalized around the same time that the Americas were discovered. It puts into perspective the history and the age of these sites. Before the introduction of Christianity on the island, Cypriots were mainly pagan. And as the church did in many other regions that practiced paganism but converted to Christianity, the practices of the church tended to meld with pagan traditions in order to make the transition easier from one faith to another. Hence the emergence of Panagia. In this particular instance, we are entering a cave that was originally used for pagan rituals, but has since been converted to a shrine that focuses on Orthodox Christian icons, but also celebrates the Virgin Mary above all. So it just goes in and basically it's, it's, it then it stops here. It's never been excavated, so we've got we built a half down the place where it takes out the door. So the whole so um, that's where this the um, that they uh, they knew there was a cave because there was someone living in there and smoke was coming out. Um, so don't forget this has been lived in by someone for thousands of thousands of years. 
I've really come to love the artwork that is presented in the Orthodox Christian fashion with the icons. Okay, here's where I get to show off my Greek skills. Parakalume, we ask, min anavete keria entos tu spilio. Don't light candles inside the cave. And then who's asking that? The Committee of the Apostle Luke. And then the pictures below show the candle length that is approved, which is lower and correct and wrong if it's tall. A donation is requested and a candle can be lit as prayers are offered. Museum, located in Episcopi Village, is actually a two-story home that was built in the 1930s by an American businessman turned archaeologist, George McFadden. And this was found recycled in the steps of the Agora. And the text says this uh, island was given to Cleopatra by Antony. It's written there, it's just the Romans who just reused it and hmm, dumped it. All the marble that you see, we'll show you around that side, it was a medium for the artist. So he carved something and it'd be all white, but then it was painted, real colour. Yeah. You know, this is where they went to the British Museum and painted wrong. They took the, um, what are now known as the Elgin marbles, took them back. To London, and then they got the sandblaster out and then removed all this black crud, which was the oxidized paint. <laughs> Of the more visceral exhibitions is this one, a small family that was discovered from 4th century AD within the ancient site of Korean. Apparently they were victims of an earthquake. McFadden drowned in a boating accident in 1953, and the very next year, the house was turned over to the Department of Antiquities and the Cypriot government. So this is sixth century technology. Two of these have got very obvious. Two of them look so obvious. In this part of our tour, my mind was blown. Mr. Haggerty explained that these sarcophagi that were found at the rear of the museum are so named because the word sarcophagus can be broken down into two Greek words. Sarka, meaning flesh, and fagito, meaning food. Apparently, the caskets were made of two levels of stone. The first was used for decoration. However, the lower level was made of a separate type of stone that was porous and would be absorbent as the body within decayed and putrefied thus preserving the bones of the individual, which in years to come, as uh, sarcophagi were unearthed and excavated, um, was to the benefit of those who discovered them because the bodies were so well preserved. Next were the ruins in Sotira village. The habitations were used for 3,000 years, yet all that remains now are the foundations. So when you find these, so these are either, if they're in the middle of a building, then it's most probably going to be a post hole. Oh, but it might not be a post hole because it might be next to a fireplace, in which case it might be where they're doing the grinding. But most of the grinding for the corn that will be done outside the building. Another day of exploring Cypriot ruins took our group to Ayos Hermogenis, not far from Korean Beach. This small chapel is named after the saint or Ayos Hermogenis, who was born in the 4th century. But what happened to him? They killed him. They chopped his head off. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, and they, they, the, the, his, the, his followers, or those who he had converted, they put him into a coffin and, that, and then they pushed him out to sea. Okay, this is what they say happened. Obviously, obviously didn't, but anyway, the coffin came ashore here at Concurian Beach. Hmm. So the people here found the coffin, and there must have been an inscription or something, um, and they were already Christians at this end. Okay. So they buried him here. This, this here is his um, this burial under place. under here is, is reputed to be where he, he's actually buried. His sarcophagus? Uh, it, well, it's, no, it's on the ground. It was, <laughs> okay. So this is where he was buried. So this is his little um, shrine, and then they built a little chapel over it. Uh, and now it's, it's used for weddings. It's uh, he's, he's the patron saint of um, uh, hopeless cases, upset marriages. And of course, no local archaeology course could be complete without a visit to ancient Kurian. This ancient city dates back to the 8th century BC. Archaeological evidence can be witnessed by anyone walking through the ruins of the Hellenistic period, the Roman period, as well as the Christian eras. And we said there's layer upon layer of mosaics. Well, underneath this one here, there's three more layers of mosaics. In this hole here, uh, feeling around, I came across a, a rusty mass. We've got some of the cricket balls in there. Um, and what it was, was um, an iron nail had got itself stuck horizontally in, in the channel. And all the copper coins from this area here had been washed down into it and uh, through electrolysis had, had annealed themselves to it. So I had a, a lump of uh, copper coins. And the electrolysis was caused by, by the iron nail. Galvanic corrosion happens when one metal corrodes preferentially to another. In this case, the iron nail is corroding versus the copper wire is preserved. Psst, don't tell anyone, but Frank snuck us into the sewage system. This one here is water duct, see it? Earthquake rebuild, water duct, earthquake rebuild. The next one, water duct. So five or six layers, literally. All the layer. Yeah. Interesting. So this is all. This is all there is here. It's just blocked off on the other side. And what is this again that we're standing in? The sewage system. The old sewage system. Okay, off you go. This was great, but my favorite things to look at are always the mosaics. Bet you didn't know this about Cyprus. We get flamingos once a year. They are drawn to the Salt Lake in Akrotiri Marsh. Walking to the cliffside at Royal Air Force Base Akrotiri provides a brief repose before we hike down the hill. I don't know about you, but I am in the mood to see some cliffside tombs. Where are we all here? As long as you don't have a fear of heights, I couldn't think of a more serene and beautiful place to be buried. As you might imagine, cliffside tombs were not for your average Cypriot. To the left here, keep to the left. These were special burial sites carved into the sloping rock of the cliff face and were reserved for wealthy families who could afford the service. But even if you're super wealthy, you still want to save a buck. So these burial tombs were repurposed. As generations would pass, new dead would be buried on top of the old. I feel very fortunate to have been able to take this course. Akrotiri Peninsula boasts the oldest evidence of human activity on all of the island of Cyprus. Due to there being a military base there, it's largely undeveloped, and so a lot of these sites are preserved very well. And in the end, I got my certificate of completion, but more so than that, I enjoyed meeting a great group of people. <laughs>